and oppressed. Now what we mean when we say that, when somebody's being oppressed, when somebody is being made to think or feel or do something other than they want. And so there are people in both of these plays playing characters who are being oppressed and playing characters who are oppressors, who are making people think, feel, or do something other than they want. It's very important for you to understand that there are people in these plays who are playing people other than themselves. And it's been um, a difficult process to take that on. Uh, because, of course, the material of these plays is, is very heavy. Um, another reason it's important for you to know that is so that when you meet them later on or on the street some other time, you don't think they're awful people. <laughs> because they're not. Uh, and it's important that you know that. Also something that was mentioned earlier are the counselors that are available. And I'd just like to identify them again now. Uh, so if people could please stand up. Okay, they all have, almost all have the green shirts. Those people are available at any point during or after this play. If you need someone to talk to, be sure to go to them. Could, could I ask the counselors to do something for me, please? Instead of being in the audience, could some of you sort of be on that side, some of you on the other side, so if somebody does need you, they don't have to come and find you. That they know who you are, please. Could you do that? Thank you very much. So Jack is going to introduce the first piece then. Okay, so before you see this, this piece, it's important for you to know a couple of things. Um, this is a classroom setting. These are young children. Okay? Our brother and sister. This one in the back is a new student. Okay, so she's just brand new in the residential school. Um, this is the classroom setting. Over there is going to be the principal's office. And I think that's all you need to know. Yeah, these two are the nuns. That will become clear. Okay? Get up! 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 Get up!
any way you can, wave your arms, yell, stop, just to get our attention. The action here will freeze. The reason to yell stop is if you see somebody being oppressed or treated badly, and you think you can deal with the situation differently, to break the oppression, to solve the problem in the plane, you'll come out of your seat onto the playing area here, take the place of the character who is being oppressed, and trap your ID to break the oppression. Now I know that that sounds scary, um, but we've done this sort of work all over the world now, and I know that once the first person has the courage to yell stop, that some kind of a, an ice will be broken, and we'll realize that even though the issues we're dealing with here are very, very serious, that if we work together, we can have a good time exploring these issues. And I know you might be shaking your head when you hear me say that at the moment, but I know that it's true. <clears throat> when you come up onto the stage, whether you solve the problem or not is not the point. The point is to try. Out of your attempt, everybody learns things. So whether you solve the problem or not is not the issue. Sometimes we learn the most important lessons by interventions, by people coming up on the stage and not solving the problem. Because we learn what not to do in a certain situation. And that's very valuable. Also, your idea might give somebody else an idea. And that idea will give somebody else an idea. And in that way, we'll go deeper and deeper into an investigation of the issues that will be presented to you in the second play. We're going to show you the piece and then come back and tell you a little bit more about, um, about how the form is going to work. But I think you should see it first. Please watch it with a critical eye for people who you think or feel are being oppressed or treated badly. Here we go. Ready? Ready there? Oh, actually, no, wait. I have to, there's, some, there's some things I have to explain. Can I have the cast on stage? Okay. Charles here, in this play, plays two separate characters. The play begins in the bar. When he's here the first time in the bar over here, his name is Bill. And Bill is the father of Lawrence. When he comes back the next time, wearing sunglasses, wearing sunglasses, his name is Chuck. And he's a different person, okay? And that different person is Connie's father. And you need to know that. There's no way for us to explain it other than to tell you. Penelope. <laughs> is, the, is the mother of them both. Okay? Um, so the play takes place in the bar and then in Penelope and the kids' home. Alright? Here we go. We just started the party. I want to go home. Well, I got a room upstairs. Why don't we just go upstairs? No, I want to go home. I'm, I'm tired. Well, you can rest upstairs. Come on, it's no problem. Nothing's going to happen. Will you look after me? Sure, why not? Don't worry. How you doing? 
Not too bad. I've been trying to get a hold of you. Yeah, well, I've been busy, not working. I have something to tell you. I'm pregnant with your baby. No fucking way. What do you mean, no way? You gotta take some responsibility. How can I when it's not mine? You sleep around all over town. Bullshit! Yeah, you know, you do. Well, fuck you then. Yeah, fuck you too. Yell, stop, we'll freeze the action. 
You'll come onto the stage, take the oppressed character's place, and try your idea. You only have to be here as long as it takes to try the idea. It could be 30 seconds. You don't have to play the part for the entire rest of the play. You're not going to get trapped up here. And then you can go back to your seat. There's one quick thing I want to do with you before we start. All through the workshop here, we've done exercises to activate ourselves before we work. And I know you're in your seats and you've been sitting for a long time. I'm not going to ask you to get up and run around the room, but I am going to ask you to do this one thing with me. Start making an X with one of your arms in the air. Just do this with me, please. Okay. And now with your other arm, start making a circle at the same time. and try out your idea, and we'll see what happens from there. I'm sorry, I should tell you one more thing. I should tell you one more thing, I apologize. We ask you to replace characters that are being oppressed. We ask you not to replace characters who you think are being oppressors, who you think are creating the problem. So that, you know, at any moment, if, if I'm in a scene and I'm really treating somebody badly, we ask you not to come up and take my, my place, the character, a, a, a character's place, and just turn them into a nice person. That's magic. And, we, and, and magic isn't all that helpful to us in this kind of work. What is helpful is somebody coming up and struggling to solve the problem against the oppression. And that's what we're living from. So we ask you to try to think of it in those terms, please. Okay. Jesus Christ, she's passed out before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? I want to go home. We just started the party. Stop. <laughs> she said stop, but she doesn't want to do anything. Okay. Okay. Would you start again, please? Christ, she's already passed out before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? We just started the party. Uh, stop. Who would you replace? No, 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 wait, wait. He, he needs to tell us. Who would you replace? It's, uh... It's the alcohol that is is the main. Uh, it's the corporate structure that. Who? Uh, you need to that this, replace one of these characters. So who would you replace? The, this person is already drunk, and so he's bringing more. I, I don't want you to tell me your idea. I just want you to tell me who you who you replace.
you saw something, that's why you're standing here, you saw something over there, right? So, which character do you think is being oppressed? Okay, so then replace the woman. Okay? Just see what happens. Okay. Okay, okay intervention is to replace Penelope. Now, something important is already happening here that I want to acknowledge. In this work, we need to be able to have men replace women, women replace men, kids replace adults, adults replace kids, and that there are no boundaries that way. We need to be able to play each other freely. So this is a good thing to begin with. Okay? So, we'll begin and we'll see what happens. Jesus Christ, he's already passed out before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, we just started the party. Wow, what's the matter? <sighs> Look, I brought you another beer. I uh, don't want any more. Why not? We just started. I can hardly get my breath. Well, let's go upstairs. I got a bed upstairs in the room. No, you can rest there. I don't know you. Well, that's so we can get to know each other now. Come on. No. I got a room upstairs. No. How come? You said you needed to rest. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Well, help yourself. Okay. Okay, good. Michael's intervention here is a very strong one. I want to ask you something, Michael. What you show us is that even though you're drunk, that there's, that there's a voice inside you somewhere, is that right? Yeah, that's telling you, I don't know this person, I'm not going to go anywhere with him. <coughs> Do people, you know, I, I know the situation Penelope's in. Do people hear that voice in them when they've been in situations like she's in? Is there that little voice there that you hear somewhere? Yeah, some of you are nodding yes, some of you are nodding no. Okay. I think for many people that voice exists, like it exists for Michael. He, he sees it. And, he, and, and what the intervention is saying to us is, listen to that voice. Right? The intervention isn't, oh, um, I've thrown away the alcohol, suddenly I'm not drunk. The intervention is, I'm in this situation, how do I protect myself? And one way is to keep in touch with that little voice. And there's an important lesson there, right? That little voice is getting him out of this room, which means he's not going to go up to this guy's room. And that is a small victory. For some it may be possible, for some it's not possible. I don't know. But the intervention, and I think we all know what he struggles against in the moment. The oppression that this intervener struggles against. And we can take a lesson from it. Anything you want to say before you go? You need to stand up. <laughs> no? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to just bring um, Bill in one more time, and we're going to see if there's any other ideas. <laughs> Price is already passed up before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? We just started the party. I want to go home. Well, I got a room upstairs. You can rest up there. No, I want to go home. Oh, come on. I just bought you another beer. You need a rest. Stop. Oh, you don't know. You just did that. <laughs>
wish I wasn't drunk, I wish I wasn't here, I wish I wasn't trying to pick up this woman, but I'm drunk, so I guess that's okay. What are you going to do now? Get drunk, get drunk, get fucked. Okay, so this is a learned lifestyle. I don't know if it was learned, but that's what I did. Yeah. Now I understand it's a learned behavior, but yeah. back then I didn't know. It was the way I had to be. Okay, so when we're looking at the issue of residential school, this is something that this character could have learned in that experience, right? The, the no conscience the, and the walls and the denial, and you don't care. And so there was no place to have this input. Okay, so that's what we discover out of the residential school. Okay. Without playing this scene again, because you know what it is, I'm going to ask, is there any other idea about how to deal with the situation? We'll take one other if there is. Yes? I don't want, I don't want you to tell me, though. I want you to do it. Oh, indeed. No. <laughs> If we start allowing people to explain interventions, we go into discussion. And the way we have to have this discussion is through action. 
And so we'll have time for discussion after, but we'll, for now, the discussion must happen through action. Okay? So if you want to talk about it, we can do it later. But for now, we'll only take interventions that are active, please. Because we'll stop before it. Does anybody else have an idea that they want to try it? Yes, come. Who would you replace? The woman. Penelope. Jesus Christ, she's already passed out before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? Who are you? I'm your friend, remember? We met five years ago. Where are my friends, Dad, Betty? I'm drunk. Oh, please. Where are my friends? What's your problem? I don't know who you are. Yeah. I know I'm not capable of taking okay, care bought, of myself in the state. Dad, Betty, Dad, Dad, bring me home. I don't know who this guy is. I don't like him. Yeah. Talk to me like that. I'm going to party without you. There's always well, somebody else there. available. Who are you? Oh, God, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. Thanks. <laughs> Danielle. Okay, Danielle in the moment, invent somebody who isn't here in our play. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, we put two people in the, in the piece, but it's a great idea. If you know you're going to go to the party, take a friend, right? Okay, so basically that's the idea, and it works. If you can have an agreement with your friend that you're both not going to party so hard, that you're both going to not be able to get home. I think that's part of the bargain, probably. Yeah? Also, there's a woman in it. I mean, if I didn't know anybody else in the bar and I felt threatened, I'd yell and scream. Because people often will listen to women if they're, well, I don't know about often, but in a situation like that, hopefully, just because you're a woman. I don't know if a guy was being threatened, they might just uh, let him fight outside or something like that. But I would pick up as much fuss as I can so that even the cops would call, somebody would be there. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the next scene when uh, these two meet in the street. Oh, I'm, uh, no, 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 when you leave the bar. We should get you to leave the bar and see what happens and then go on from there. So if you just start from the table, get up and, and continue from that spot. Pregnant with your baby. No fucking way. Yes. What do you mean, no way? Well, I know you sleep around all over town. Oh, shit. Yeah. You gotta take some responsibility. Not if it's mine. Yeah, we had one encounter. What are you talking about? There's hundred other guys you would have been with. Let's try DNA test. <laughs> Get serious. 
the court system. I want to take this to court. Help yourself. Okay. I'll prove you wrong. And I just leave it at that. Okay. What had you hoped what, that you would get from this character in, in confronting him the way you did? Well, I tried to be assertive, but it's hard for me to play being assertive. Um, I think um, too often this, this is let slide. Um, paternity of children is quite often washed aside. And um, I was sitting there thinking about, um, oh Jesus, <laughs> the DNA testing and the way things can be proven, and, and there really should be no need for that today. There really should, you know, um, right going back to the beginning scene um, in the bar, I really believe that there's this overall prevailing attitude that, and women are constantly devalued and our word isn't heard and we aren't believed in. Okay, so, so, to be heard, you're willing to take them to court. Well, not necessarily. That just happened. Um, I think that there are other ways of dealing with it. Um, and but that utilizing technology would be one way. Okay. Okay. Um, so then, then at least. Okay. Then you would at least have proof that yes, he's the father. Yes. What would well, you? Well, I would know. You would know. I would know as a woman who the father of my children are. Okay. Okay. And for you, as if she had the proof that you were the father, then what? I still wouldn't care. Because I'm still in that attitude. Forget it. Okay. So we discovered for this character, though, that there are ways for her to take a stand for herself and for her child. And depending on the situation, this character may or may not become more involved as a result of that. And as long as I was standing in my truth and I knew, that would be what would come for me. Right. Good. Thanks. Are you speaking? And then, uh, <laughs> the rules of life it up. We will get there. We're moving into the play to get there. So, if you have ideas, we'll get there. Uh, I need to know before we leave this, there is a moment, a symbolic moment between the two of them when they leave the bar and they embrace. And obviously that's a symbolic moment that are in Bill's room. Are there any possibilities in that moment before we let it go? Yes? But I don't want you to tell me, I want you to do it. Okay. Who do we play? Okay. So you're just gonna leave. Uh, don't think for me when you're getting up to leave the bar. Okay. Okay, Mike. Did you make the suggestion? There was a time when I didn't realize that I had the power or I had a choice. 
and I wasn't responsible for my own actions and maybe combining those three attitudes and keeping them within okay. and not allowing myself to be abused. Okay, so it's possible, you know, you know, you, you know, we, we might know we're in a situation where something like this could happen. And so we prepare ourselves yeah. and we don't leave home without one. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on through, let's move on through to uh, the kids, I think, okay? Yeah, let's move on. So we left the thing with, uh, with Bill and we're now going to go into the house uh, Lawrence is going to come out with the, with the game. I should have said it a bit earlier, but, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I did play, uh, hmm. Um, uh, hey, I guess it was a year. Exactly what you see is being oppressed in this moment. <coughs> well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. Where do you want to start from? Um. Show me how to use it. Can we share it? No. <laughs> you have your own toys to play with. But I, I'm willing to share them with you. <laughs> we can share them. <laughs> no, I said. Well, can you show me how to use it? No. Can I see you use it? Can you show me? No. Get your own. My daddy bought this one for me. Oh. fighting or making any noise. It was the noise that was getting to me. Okay, but this is something you're not used to, right? You're used to them fighting. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything different here because of this? That I wouldn't abuse it. Well, is there, is there anything you think about that is different as a result of this character talking this way? It um, doesn't seem realistic because she's five and she's supposed oh. to be bratty or like... Well... <laughs> okay, that was she's my... She's been abused too already, so she's got a different character. She's not that mellow and nice, you know, she's trying to get mm -hmm. attention a lot. Okay, so my next question was, you probably didn't teach her this. No. no. <laughs> Okay, for this child, regardless of age, for a young child, do you think there's a possibility that she would be able to learn this kind of communication um, if she didn't get it here? Well, it, it's possible, but I, it, it would really depend on who other people she was um, surrounded by other than her family. Um, if they would teach that sort of thing. Okay, depend, uh, I agree. Depending on the age of this child, 
there could be an opportunity for her to le learn to communicate this way, depending on, you know, if she was in school or if she had relatives that were, were maybe more supportive than the mother. Um, there is that possibility, but it, it's also a lot to ask of this little child to do this. And you don't give in. Why? Um, I just about did. I was just about going to start showing her. <laughs> okay, so it made you think. Yeah, it did make you think. Okay. Okay, so there's a, there's a beginning here. A possibility of a beginning. Thank you. Thank you. So can we pick up from uh, uh, both girls in here, and um, you're going to send them to bed, okay? God damn it, I'm sick of you guys fighting. Get to bed now. It's too early. Chuck's coming. You better behave yourself. Get to bed now. But it's still bright out. I don't Either one of the girls. Take it there. Look. Okay, intervention is to re replace Florence. And where do you want to go from? Uh, maybe it's not there. Okay, so if we can come back out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very happy child. <laughs> okay. So your mom, she just about to start to yell at us for a bit. Stick it! Fighting! Get to bed! It's still so early. You better save yourself. Chuck's coming. Get to bed! Now! But it's still bright out. Get to bed! I don't care! Mommy? What? Get to bed? I told you to get to bed! God damn you! No! Get! Mommy? God damn you! I told you to get to bed! Do you want this? No. Get to bed then! Now! I need to say something. I don't care! Listen to me! Stay there now! Don't or I'll be back here again to strap you. Can I talk? <laughs> I feel... I feel sad when Mommy yells at me. But she always yells at us. Why do you feel sad now? <laughs> I always feel sad. Try to hold it together. I don't know why she, she's always yelling. I feel like I'm scared to talk to people because she yells at me so much. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. But I need to talk about it. I feel scared to talk to anybody about anything because she's always yelling. I feel like I'm being closed up all the time. She's going to hear us. She's going to get mad. I can hear you guys talking in there. Get to the place. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk to my teacher about it tomorrow. Um, your 
young, very young daughter comes to you three times, four times, wants to talk to you, and you keep saying, no, go to bed. Why don't you talk to her? Okay, so we're hearing from mom in this situation, and keep in mind, of course, that this play has grown out of the first play, that, that him coming, the boyfriend coming, or the, yeah, the boyfriend coming, is more important in this moment than the fact that her daughter wants to talk to her. There's a big question there about how we deal with that. The daughter has something very important, and goes to the only person, the other person, who is there, which is her sister. And your response also is, we're going to get in trouble, I don't want to talk about this. Why? Well, I know that Chuck is coming over, and I guess I know what happens all the time. And he's my dad, so I'm kind of scared. But... Right, so this character is also under a lot of pressure. It's a very complicated piece we've put together because the guy who's sexually abusing this young girl is this young girl's father. Very difficult place. And also there's punishment. So your decision then is to go outside the family. To, um, to go talk to your teacher, you said. Yeah, but the, the oppression that I see was the yelling. That, that's what I wanted to, oh, to, to confront, was the yelling and how, how it affects the self-esteem and affects uh, her communication skills. You know, she, she, the, yelling, the, the yelling is belittling. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to, to let my mom know is that I feel really sad about that. Okay, I'm making an assumption here that isn't true then. I'm assuming, and there's a very important lesson here, I'm assuming that you want to talk to her about the fact that oh. he's coming. And that, in fact, is not what you want to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's, okay this, this is important. I make that assumption because I know what's going to happen in the play. Yeah, right? that's why I started from... The decision you make is to talk about this other thing, but you also know because you've seen the play what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Can you talk about the fact that your decision is not to talk about that? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm trying to be focused on... The, the, the act of the yelling okay. and how the, how the girl feels. Okay. Okay. What we're seeing though, you know, theater is full of symbols, and what we're seeing is that the character is trying to talk about something. <laughs> I'm going to use a word here. I, 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 I'm having a hard time finding the language right now, but there are, there are two issues here. One is the yelling and one is the abuse, and I'm going to lay more importance on one than the other just to talk about it, and I know that that might be a weird thing to do, but please bear with me, because it may be easier in a sense to talk about the yelling than to talk about the abuse, and yet you can't even get any, any connection to talk about the yelling inside this family, and that's, that's a very difficult place. So you're going to go to your teacher and talk about the yelling, yes? Yeah, and I think I stopped there because that's... That's how I'm feeling the effects of the residential school in my own life. Right. Yeah. Is that you have to go outside the family? No, it's how, how yelling affects somebody's self-esteem. Right. Okay. Let me ask you, is this character going to go talk to a teacher? Yes. Yes, very definitely. Can I ask you just a question before we move on? If this young girl goes and talks to a teacher, what happens? The teacher might... Okay, this, this young man here says the teacher might tell the police and then welfare might take the kids away from the home. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to pose that question and suggest we move on further through and maybe the answer to that question will come through more interventions. Okay? It's a very important question. It's what this is all about. Where does this young girl go? Thank you very much. Okay, um, so you, you're in bed. The, the, uh, 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 Florence and Connie are in bed. Chuck is coming. Uh, Chuck is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Grace, what's all the bloody noise? I got there. I need one of those. What's going on? Ah, the bloody oh, crap. Stop. First time she's talked about, I know what you're doing. So I make myself out of here. Because secret is out with her. Okay. Do you think that it, as Penelope, this character, this is something that you could do? be pretty hard because I was lonely, you know, already, and I wanted the companionship, and um, that loneliness is going to be really hard to face. Um, so do you know what's going on over there? Oh, I don't. How would I know? Because they never told me, and I, won't, I don't want to acknowledge it. Okay, so when you say, I don't want to acknowledge it, is there an idea in your mind that this is a possibility. Yeah, there's some signs there. You know. So we hear from our Penelope that it's probably a really difficult thing for her to do. Can you tell us where you find the courage to be able to stand up to them and say, no more? Thinking that um, if he does something to me, I can always go through the welfare or I can go through the police and I can take my three children with me. Okay, so somewhere along the line you've gotten all this information. Um, new information that there's help for you and for the kids. Okay. Thanks to counselors and treatment Yes. Okay, great. So that possibility is there. People in the community have a key role in a situation like this. We educate our people that there is help available then in situations like this, they can do something. They have something to back them up. Okay. Is this an intervention? 
This is now. Now? Now. <laughs> um, just for those of you, just because of what, what would just happen here, um, I want to point out that for those of you who have programs, there's a list, right? Uh, for those of you who have programs, there is a list of resources in your program. It's there for you to use, or there for you to give to somebody who you think would be able to use it. Please use it. Um, there was? Yeah, I think. Um, we should. Um, mm, okay. Come. Oh, it's a double whammy. It's two people coming up at the same time. <laughs> Replace. I'd like to be on the bed myself. Okay, well, all right. And, and is it at this point in the play? When he comes over. When he comes over. Well, we're, yeah, we're just about to get there anyway, so. Okay. No. Well, you're just here. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, so you would replace this character? Both of them. Nothing by myself. Okay, we can let you do that. So, both clear out. Chuck, uh, Chuck approaches the bed, so he just said, uh, I got, I'm going to go to the camp. I got to go to the camp. Oh, okay, okay. Just before we leave this and move on to this, uh, uh, I need to relate to what he just did. Okay. He kind of acted out what happened to him many, many years ago. The same man played with a lot of us in the same manner. He acted out a part that I actually did. So it, it can be done, but the reason I'm standing here in, in, in explanation for my friend is even though I was able to say no, it still hurts. You still feel the pain. It's 
so goddamn embarrassing. And nothing happened to me. Physical. I got out of that man's clutches before he could do anything. But even saying no and getting away is this painful. Thank you. Um, I'm probably going to state the obvious, but the power of Mel's intervention tells us to teach our kids, to teach our brothers and sisters to say no loud. Um, just one step. I'm going to ask you a question. Char Charlie's in the position of playing that character and it's a hard thing to do. But in the moment when, well, when Florence, when Mel Florence yells no, yells really loud, what happens to him? I got scared. This character is performing a secret. And if there's danger that it's no longer a secret, then something, maybe not everything, but something will happen. Because this character, the character that he's playing, can't afford to let the secret be known. So it's really important to say no, as difficult as it is. And it is that difficult. I know. I know. I've got to say stop because I feel this is abusive. I think that the child cannot be put in a spot at any point where they can be blamed for what they do or to be told that they could do something other than they did. They find a way to survive in that situation. You cannot tell a child to go into a situation like that and say no when he could be very seriously or she very seriously damaged. The child knows what they have to do to survive that situation. For the child to find a solution with someone else or maybe talk to someone outside of the family, the child cannot be suggested to the child that they can respond in any other way than they do. They find a way to survive. They must not carry any burden of guilt that they are in any way responsible for their own abuse. I'm, I'm not talking about guilt. But that is guilt if you tell the child they should have done something other than they could. That's not what I said. It, it, it doesn't help even, even thinking in those terms. I'm sorry to say. I didn't Like I said, uh, even though I was able to get away, I still felt the guilt and that pain. But, but sympathizing with it doesn't cancel the pain after it's happened. No. No. So, I mean, they say that a child, I, I said no. I said no. I got away for many years. For many years, I wonder why this man never came back after me. You may have got away from other child may not have. That's my concern. No, I'm not expecting it. That has to be dealt with. The pain has to be dealt with later. Can I say something? Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Please. Sit down, please. Yep. What we're talking about is our pain. The pain that went through for years. We're not asking anybody to change. What we're saying is hear us. Please hear us. Let us walk. Let us be able to say this is ours. Maybe you gave it to us or somebody gave it. But it's time that that man and that man that was up here is able to work with people.
that know what they're talking about? This man, this woman. That have gone through what we've gone through. Please honor us on that. Thank you.
those are my goals. I've changed my whole life around from that. I just want to let you guys know it is really hard. It is really hard. And that I got something out of this and I'm glad that my wife had made it. She was kind of late, but I was wondering if I may call her up. My wife. Judy, I'm going to come up for a second. This is my wife here, and I had sat down just like what I was saying, we've got to talk about this. I said I was so on and over one New Year's, and uh, I sat my family at the table before we had supper, and I said, I'm committing myself to you guys that I'm going to quit this because I cannot go on any longer. I love you guys too much for you guys to walk out the door without me. Past few years, I had a few things. And the drugs, I also pushed out of my life. And I want to prove to this woman that, that I can do it. The man I'm supposed to be, the husband, the father I'm supposed to be. and then move on to the next scene because it's been a long day and uh, but it's important that we get to the end of the play so I would like to say that um, I felt very threatened that our power was just about taken away from us by this gentleman assuming that we all have parental skills, that we can see when we're putting our children in danger or in jeopardy. That's not the case. Some of us, some of our parents, had no idea when we were in danger. And I suggest maybe that, maybe this gentleman ought to look at that. He assumes something about us doesn't know. We were robbed of that when we were in residential schools. I don't even know when my child is in danger. How is he to say that I'm not supposed to put him in jeopardy? Perhaps you should look at that. And there are a lot of people like him out there. Don't let him rob our power. Today it's ours. Thank you.
Okay, I'm going to ask that we go on to the last scene of the play. Um, Chuck is gone, and uh, we're coming to the bed. in again. Wake up. God damn you. Jesus Christ. You pissed the bed again? Hurry, Mom. Right, hurry, Mom. Think up this old house. Florence. Okay, the intervention is to replace Florence and from when she comes to the bed. Come on, come on. <laughs> okay, I was going to speak really loud. Come on, you guys, get up. You slept in again. Get up. God damn you, did you piss the bed again? Stupid? No, no, I didn't. Smell what? I can smell it from here. I didn't, I didn't pee the bed. God damn you, take it to the washer. Your boyfriend, your boyfriend did stuff to me, Mom. Don't talk like that. Your boyfriend did stuff to Don't me, Mom. Don't talk like that. You're supposed, supposed to be my mommy. You're supposed to be protecting me. Don't talk me. like that. You talk to me like that. Come here. Come here. No. No. Here, I said. No. You're only five. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. You want to go on? You want to go on? Okay. Go on? I don't want to go on. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, yeah. Just a second. Let's let them do this more come to you. Come here. Listen to me. Please listen to me. Come here. No. Don't talk to me like that. No. I don't mean. I don't want to listen to you. Well, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to talk to somebody else who will. I've been learning in school that it's not okay what Chuck does to me. He does things don't to me. Don't talk about him. Chuck touches me! Okay, Rose. This is a, a very young girl. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Penelope said something in the middle of the intervention. She said, she sort of stepped out of character, said, no, you're only five, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but five-year-olds know what's happening to them, right? Yeah. So this five-year-old, says, I've had it. And, and I'm standing here watching it going, watching the scene going, now where did that five-year-old sort of, you know, learn to stand up like this? And then you said, we learned in school that what's ha what Chuck is doing to me is wrong. Are programs starting in school? Yes, they are. Okay, she says, yes, they are. <laughs> okay. Um, so that there is a way that this young girl could bring that knowledge into the house. Yes? Finally, when she yelled at you, what stopped you cold? Finally, it took a lot to get to you. When she yelled at you, what happened? I heard her. What are you going to do? And then I got scared too because she told the secret outside of the house and she said I learned this in uh -huh. school. Okay. So I'm going to have to look at it because it's real. Okay, so what we're hearing is that, that the character is going, Oh no, my little daughter told the secret outside the house. So I can't hide it anymore. I can't hide from it anymore. What are you thinking about all this, bigger sister? Um, well, I, got, I was scared. Like, I felt like running away. Um, but then when I seen her really sticking up for herself, I felt hope. I wanted to go stand beside her. Okay. Um, Connie is saying, I don't know if you, Connie is saying that, that when her little sister did that, she felt hope and, and she wanted to go and stand beside her and be with her. One of the things that this intervention shows us 
is that if there can be things, if, if there isn't help in the home, then maybe there does have to be help outside the home. And if there are things happening in the schools, good. Let's support them. Because if this little girl can get support somewhere else, then maybe she can say to her mom finally somehow, even if it's this hard, even if it's this hard. Anything you want to say before you go? I do have something to say. As a child, I wasn't hurt. As a child, I wasn't hurt. And I'm in training now in order to help children and others that have been abused or violated in any way. And I guess what I need to say is what I am seeing and what I heard today are what children believe. They believe that if they go to their parents, something bad is going to happen. So what I need to say in the deepest part of my heart, believe your children. Let your children know that they are safe. Let them know that you love them, that no matter what, you will believe them and you will be there to support them. You will be there to love and honor them. And they will come forward and speak. They won't have to go outside. Our children never had to go outside a long time ago. And it's time that they know that they can go to their parents with anything. I was a sacrificial lamb in my family. So when it comes to children, the deepest part of my heart cries. Okay, it's getting late, and I, I need some feedback from you, please. Um, I have an impulse to say that we'll take one more intervention and then end this part of the day. Is that okay with you or do you want to keep going? Talk to me, please. So, can I go in at the beginning where all this starts with the man and the wife in the bar? Yes, for sure. For sure. Can I get the man in this country first? Like, are people able to go water or do you want to bring us to a close? Keep going. Keep going. What I'm hearing is keep going. Is that yes? Yes. Okay, I you understand I need permission at the moment because okay, come. He wants to go back, way back, way back, way back in the bar here. Yeah. Okay, so who would you replace in the bar? Penelope? No. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's already passed out before I can get into her pants. Hey, what's going on here? I want to go home! Well, I got a room upstairs. Come on, we can... Claire! 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 <laughs> what are you, fire? I'm going to have my beer. That's right. I had to break his mood. <laughs> and he's in there. He wants to screw me. Yeah. When I'm calling out, fire! <laughs> okay. What do you think when you hear her yelling fire? Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so, I gotta go look for an easier target. Okay, so you didn't think there's a fire? <laughs> no. Okay, so this is just a little too weird then. Yeah. Okay. So the solution works. Gets rid of him. She's safe. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna pick up then. We're gonna move on through the play. Oh, was there? Was there an intervention here? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. 
place. Of the girls in the bed? Which one? Anyone? Well, you make this decision. Off. No, no, it's only one left. Yeah. Okay. But it's important that you decide which one because they're they're different characters. Okay, we're going from when Chuck comes into the bedroom. tonight for Florence that a lot you know that changes things that, that allows you to do this but I told her I told the mom I told the mom uh, what happened actually you know what let's go over here okay the <laughs> no, I didn't tell the mom what happened but uh, as the only person that uh, I could trust I'll tell you that because I had a scenario where uh, I caught someone right in the act. I think I made a mistake when I when I caught that person in the act by going to the RCMP. Then I reported it to USMA. That is supposed to be a family protection service for children, but in fact nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing from the police side. This was on a Sunday afternoon. The auxiliary people from the houses came to the FINA that day, and it was more important for the RCMP to go and shoot off their guns that day than to take care of that problem. I think that because it first went to the RCMP, the USMA hadn't much to do with it after that. And then it's now it's under the rug way back there. This treatment that we have been receiving as uh, coolest over here, it's the same. It's going on and on and on. When I see that individual around children, young children, it drives me crazy because I know exactly where it comes from. I know where that person learned that from. But you can't tell the police anything if they don't listen to you. Where in you? I'm telling you the truth. I saw this happen with my own eyes. I went to the police station with my own handwriting. I wrote down what I saw. I signed it and I dated it. Then I saw people from Asma, maybe the same day or a day later, I told them what happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. That really hurts me. Because I have children out there. I have nieces. I have nephews. 
These programs have been going on here, but as Matt says, Matt Flynn spoke here, do we get hurt? You know, I started seeing this uh, rehearsal yesterday and it just started tearing me apart. Because we don't get hurt. It's like we're talking to uh, the walls. Hey, yesterday, somebody got raped. Can you do something about it? Up there, you. Absolutely nothing happens, nothing changes. That's what happened. There has to be some positive changes coming up. And more of these programs. For our children that are around here. Our children and the children in the, in the community here to see because they interact. It's a safety for all of us. Thank you. You, you. Okay, um, Lauren, oh, is this an intervention? Who would you replace? Okay, okay. This, this sister? Yeah. Okay, this so. This sister is, um, comes in Okay, so we need parts here, right? Okay. Okay, so just as Chuck enters the room. Gotta go to camp. Do as you're told. Go to sleep. Mommy! Shh. Mommy! Be quiet. Mommy! What's going on in there? Well, I'm probably having a nightmare. What's the matter? Who's going to try to get at me? Or my sister? Or my sister? What do you mean, get at? Try to get in her pants and you know. You pig! <laughs> really easy because you are young, but uh, can you tell us where do you find courage to be able to do that? Um, it's just like, you, you just, you don't like to see your little sister or someone getting abused like that, so you, you sort of get the courage by you seeing your little sister get abused. Okay, is it scary though? Yes. Okay. So it's really scary to call in your mom? Yeah. Okay. But you're but to protect your sister, you're willing to do that. Yes. Okay. Can you talk to us about how how this is different? Um, okay. Normally, you really don't want to hear anything from the girls. You don't want to hear what they've got to say. No complaints. Nothing. How is this different? She's now telling you this. What changes? She told me, she told me right away. Like, before any anything started, you know. So you didn't have a chance to, yeah, to get Yeah, telling her to shut up for us. She's kind of out with it right away. Okay. Okay, so in hearing that, you were just willing to hear it once you were told? Like, no, like before we saw you going, well, don't say things like that. Can you tell us how this is different? Well, it was a different child, too. Lawrence was the one telling me, and I'm 
already, she's my target of anger because of her father didn't want anything to do with her. Yeah. And she's being abused, and I don't want to recognize that she's being abused, because then I'd have to recognize myself. But it was her, like my hero daughter. Okay, so there you I thought I'd believe, you know, and she's my right-hand person, eh? <laughs> so if, if this child, being in that position in your eyes, finds the courage, then, then things will happen faster. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, let's try to get this back soon, okay? Are you, are you coming to bed? Come on, you guys, get up. You're late again. Get up. God damn you, did you piss the bed again? Sorry, Mom. Christ, you stink up the whole I'm house. Sorry, Mom. Smell it. I'm sorry. Smell it. Put it in the washer. Go get that belt. Who would you replace? Intervention is replaced Con again from what point? Um I I think uh I'd have to go right back to just just after she had been abused. So Chuck has just left? Chuck has just left. Okay. Yeah. So if you won't get on the bed. So you're, have you covered her back up yet? I've covered, yeah. Just, no? just okay. covering her back up. We're going to tell mom tomorrow. Okay? I'll help you. I'm scared too. I, I, I don't like this anymore. We're going to tell mom in the morning, okay? Come on, you guys, get up. You're late again. Get up. Mom? mom? What? Come on, hurry up. You're going to be late for school. You're already... God damn you, you pissed the bed. Mom, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Last night? What do you mean? What do you get out no, of here? No, get this because, because, because it's Chuck. It's Chuck. It's Chuck. It's not her. It's Chuck. You mean your dad? What about your dad? I, do, I don't want him here anymore. Why? That's your because dad. Tell him not to make us sad at night. What do you mean? That's your father. Does he go to see him? Not, not late at night. He's the one that looks after you. He buys you all this. I don't. What would you do without him? How many would you able to eat? I don't like what he does to Florence. What do you mean? I don't like what he does to Florence at night. What do you mean? I don't like the way he touches her. What, what do you mean by that? Like last night. Like last night, he, he touched her, and I don't, I, I don't like it anymore. Because he tells me to shut up so that he can touch her. And I don't want him coming into the, the room at night. What is she talking about? Believe her, Mom. Loudly. Believe her, Mom. He touches me. Okay, Valerie's intervention 
is to be the older sister and to take care of her younger sister. Mm -hmm. um, Penelope, actually, not Penelope, Lisa, turned to me, because that wasn't Penelope who just talked to me. L Lisa just finished the scene and turned to me and she said, I don't know what to do. We talked in the workshop about how there, are, there aren't accidents, you know, there aren't just coincidences. She turned to me and said she didn't know what to do, I think, because the character didn't know what to do. Because she was confronted by both of her daughters verifying something. Does that make sense to you? Who told me here? I'm sorry, I forgot you. If you, I'm going to ask, if you think now, ask Penelope, what are you going to do? What can Penelope do with this information? Call the police. Call the police. Make a report. Penelope is saying, maybe I'll call the police. What's going to happen if she calls the police? Nothing, this woman says. Anybody else? Going to get worse for her. He says it's going to get worse for Penelope. Anybody else? Mm, and uh, they can call, call the police and then she can tell him where his address is. Um, he says Penelope could call the police and send the police to where his address is. Yeah. Lawrenceville gets chastised by Chuck's family, claiming she's an attention. She wants attention, troublemaker. She'll be the one chastised by Chuck's family. Lawrence will get chastised by Chuck's family. There's a hand back here somewhere. Okay, we'll go over here, then we'll go over there. She could not have Chuck. She could say, Chuck, I don't want you here anymore. There was somebody here. Is that? No. Right there. But what now? I'm just going to say the same thing as Lady here. Uh, Chuck's family will reach to the girl and talk to them and talk to the mother. And uh, they will eventually not press any charges. Okay, so charges will eventually be dropped because Chuck's family will come into the picture somehow. Anybody else? Yes. Florence should be taken to the Florence should, Florence should be taken to the doctor for a checkup, and maybe that will something will happen out of that. This woman says a social worker will intervene and take Florence away out of this home. Yeah, all that I wanted to do was was change the situation so that I didn't have to confront Chuck. I didn't want to have to confront my father. I don't think that at this point Penelope necessarily is going to report Chuck to anybody or say anything to anybody. It's just that now when Chuck comes over, she knows to make sure he doesn't come up to the room. All I wanted to do was make her stop him from coming up to the room. And it doesn't solve the problem of the past, but it could solve the problem in the future without her having to even necessarily confront him. Okay. Uh, um, Valerie is saying um, that she just wants her mom to have the knowledge. Is that right? And Penelope is saying, well, she doesn't think that that would really do anything. Um, I would, I would either, you know, I have the knowledge now, and it hit hit me, and I started crying or whatever. Um, I would have to do something or probably go farther into my drinking and then it would continue worse. It would go either way. I'd have to deal with it or, or probably drink more to right. cover it up. But th there is... Oh, I'm sorry, okay. No, there's a lot of instances when mother will deny she will She won't agree with the child and, um, and I've seen so much of that. It just carries on. Mel is saying her mother will deny and um, she'll go maybe deeper into her drinking. Is that, is that correct? I'm sorry. 
it's getting late for me to. Uh, you're saying that the mother will deny. Yeah. And what and what happens because of that? More drinking, more abuse later on. More drinking, more abuse. Okay. You know what all this adds up to for me? Is that not only do these girls need support, but this mother needs support. And something that's happening here today, because there's lots of secret stuff being talked about here today. And I imagine that many of you know Penelope's and Florence's and Connie's <laughs> in your communities. And that there's stuff that you can take out of this here today and talk to them. Maybe it's hard. Maybe it's hard to do. But it's possible to do with knowledge. So that, that, that the, this older sister character, maybe if she tries to help her younger sister, can go to a mom who has support. And it's all kinds of little pieces fitting together so that something can move here. That all of that comes out of this intervention. So thank you very much. Listen, folks, um, uh, the, the energy is getting a, a, a little jangly because we're all tired. I know that people here are really tired. I'm going to start to shut this down. In order to do that, I would like to call everybody who's been involved in the workshop, please, onto the playing area. Could everybody come who is involved in the workshop, please?
this work is a circle. It works like a circle. It starts in reality. The lives of the people in the workshop. And in the theater, in the workshop, we make images of that reality. Not images of fantasy, images of reality. And through games and exercises, and then here in this forum today, we transform those images of reality using the language of the theater. Oh, we take a moment to part and put them back together, that's what we do. And in the process of that, we learn things, I hope. But that circle, making images, transforming the images, isn't complete. And so we take what we learn from that process back to reality, back to our lives, and use it to change our lives, to make the world a safer and better place for all of us. And I know I speak for everybody when I say that's what we hope happens here today. Because this week was a lot of work. And the people who did all that, who opened up their lives, are these folks here. Boy. I do this work. So I do these workshops. And I've never been in a workshop with the kind of generosity that was in this group. Ever. <laughs> Move me against it. Thank you.
that this woman they were a part of it. They opened some doors. You know who drink? For a long time. Because we're not going to be quiet. We're going to talk about it. We're not going to be told anymore. It doesn't matter. It didn't happen. Or we're not going to be told that, hey, I was punished too. I was punished too as a white person. We're not going to be told that anymore. Because here, we were stuck in a residential school. We didn't have a home to go to after. So there's a difference there. I was supposed to do something else and I forgot. <laughs> well, you forgot. <laughs> I would just like to say thank you all for coming here today. It's true, it took a lot of courage for us to walk through those doors. And through the courage, we've all had an opportunity to see And something really happened, you know, to me today. To be able to be proud, to be in the channel. To be able to recognize for once in my life that my people have a voice. I was so honored to be part of this cast because it's such a, a fearful journey. To start to understand that what we've done, to be able to portray history took a lot of pain without these people I could never ever ever be able to portray that part that I played today without the pain I shared with Agnes I would never have been able to portray the pain that another human being could put onto such a small child. And it was hard for me because in our culture we're not supposed to put elders down. It was hard for me to do that. And I want to say thank you to Agnes. I want to say thank you to Mary. What you see here is testimony towards our people. And nobody can ever take that away from us. Right from one of the younger generations right to the oldest that are still living in our communities. That representation from Nuchanel's people took a lot of courage.
because we had a lot of fear to overcome. We were scared to see how you would react. But deep down inside, when we start believing in ourselves, when we start to take those steps on the healing journeys, I was so moved when that child came up and laid on that bed. Where that child became the teacher. And we became the learners. So I want to be able to say thank you to all of these people here. I'm proud. I'm proud to be to be able to have taken a week, a week which may affect me for the rest of my life. There's no turning back for me now. There's no turning back. The process has begun. And I want to thank Headline Theater for being part of it with us. I want to shake your hand, David. This man, he put a lot of, he put up with a lot of stuff. I don't know if he wants to talk about it. <laughs> but, but to, for him to be able to, to be, be part of the process, he had to be amongst us with, with sharing a lot, so that's why I wanted to shake his hand, but also you, Jackie. Thank you. True. 